I was like waiting for her to just de-mic herself, walk out and be like, that's disgusting. Welcome to Yahoo Australia's Behind the Edit, your go-to podcast for unpacking the actual reality of reality TV. I'm Lachlan Gurdon. And I'm Talia Pritchard. We're here to talk about Married at First Sight today, the first week. I'm so excited, Lachlan. I can't believe we're already here. We've got four episodes down already and there's so much to unpack. Yeah, and we literally just had Melinda Willis leave the studio. So we've got a lot to talk about there because... She gave us a very, very iconic interview. Of course, you'll remember Melinda from season 10 last year. She was an iconic bride. Yeah, she was my favorite one, actually. I went back through my old tweets and I was like tweeting about her early on. Really? (laughs) Obsessed with her. So, I mean, I try to play it cool when she was in the (laughs) studio. And we're obviously (laughs) talking about this part when she's gone. So now I'm going to fangirl out. But I loved our chat with her. She has a lot to say about the new cast members. She also talks about her breakup with Leighton and what their relationship status is, which I thought was really great. She also spills some very, very interesting stuff about what goes on behind the edit, really. About behind the scenes from weddings to hens parties to dinner parties like we Mm -hmm. got a lot from her we also interviewed a maths celebrant who has done two iconic weddings she's given us all the behind the scenes tea on what it's like being the celebrant on maths whether it's fake how much is scripted so i think you're gonna love that yeah you had a chat with her earlier i haven't actually heard it yet so i'm excited to hear what she says but firstly i want to get your opinion so far is it anyone you're not liking so far from this season Look, I think things are questionable with Jack right now. I've heard from some sources he's got a villainous edit coming up and we're only one week in, so who knows how that's going to go. What are your thoughts on him? (laughs) Well, you know me, I'm a struggling heterosexual woman (laughs) who detests straight men at the best of times. But I am getting a lot of red flag vibes from Jack so far. Um, I'm being a bit nitpicky, not into the hair. Okay. Not into the all the stack cans of tuna in his drawers. And I'm obviously not into the how he's speaking so far about women and how he sees himself as an alpha male. I think that kind of viewpoint of himself is quite dangerous. And it has been. We've seen it in men before in these shows. But I also think it's just getting really boring yeah. to watch these men just be like, I need a submissive woman. I need this, blah, blah, blah. Like, show me what you're bringing to the table other than all that tuna like what do you <laughs> what are you bringing to a relationship jack who is giving you green flags then which brides or grooms are you loving so far okay i really love lucinda yes of course she's very quirky obviously very eccentric but you need that personality in the show too you need to balance out the kind of toxic masculinity that can happen from time to time in these shows and i just kind of want her to come sage my apartment or something like i believe in her spiritual power to like set my life right But you spoke to her, right? Yeah, I spoke with Lucinda earlier this week and I kind of asked her what her thoughts were on fans online saying that she was fake, that Mm -hmm. she was faking her accent, her name was fake. What she had to say to that was, I trust my own soul. Love is what we all want, right? But simultaneously, I'm an entertainer. I'm an MC, I'm a celebrant, and I love wild expressions. So this is me genuinely. There is no acting about it. But I suppose for some people, it's just a little bit overwhelming to see a big character on screen like myself. So I feel like she's pretty genuine. I mean, she makes some good points, and but she also says a lot without saying much at the same time. Like Fair I enough. agree. Like you know, we're all looking for love and stuff, but then all of a sudden it's like, but I am this like spiritual personality. It's just like just say we're looking for love, and then I'll be like on board. That is something that Melinda touches on. Whether you can go on maths for the intention of finding love and for finding fame, there's a lot to unpack. So here's our chat with Melinda Willis. Melinda, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. Um, Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, we love you were my favourite last year. I don't know if I should say that. <laughs> you should say that. <laughs> it's a perfect way to start off the season, though, because you had such an arc on your series, I feel. Like, yeah. you had villainous tendencies, maybe, but <laughs> you were a fan favourite. You had the love story. You had it all. So I'm excited to hear your thoughts on season 11. Yeah. How's it felt watching the show back so far? Given that you were on it last year, now you know how the show works, you know how it runs, and now you're watching a whole new cast. Do you get sucked in the same way? 
it's I've, I've reverted back to being a viewer but then obviously I know some things so I'm watching it and I'm like enjoying it and then in the back of my mind I'm like but hang on where's the context where's this what's that so but I'm trying not to do that too much to be honest because I do really love like enjoying it yeah and I missed not being able to get in the mindset of like a viewer during my season because I just knew too much mm. I tried really hard so I've been really excited to just be like okay it's over for me now I just want to get back into watching them yeah it's like i never did it did you watch every single scene of yours or were there times you were just like i can't even watch myself right now um so me and leighton would fight a lot um with it airing so there were many times where we had to not watch it for a week i think we went away for valentine's day and we agreed not to watch it because the first (laughs) night there we watched it and we were just not talking yeah so it was sorry it wasn't like the best experience watching it back yeah for sure i think we kind of missed out on that Well, I guess you're seeing stuff to assuming in his Voxies, maybe yours as well, when tensions are high however many months ago, then you have to relive that whole journey. Yes, it's like you said, what? Well, why didn't you tell me that at the time? Yeah, totally. And then some things were like edited and it was like, but is it edited or did you really say it like that? Like, you know. Uh, Yeah. Have you had people from this year's season reach out to you like for advice or you've been meeting, meeting up with anyone? So I've had, um, I ran into one of the couples, it was prior to Final Vows, so I don't know how they've gone now. Interesting, okay. And they were together and um, they didn't give much because they were, they were breaking curfew. So <laughs> <laughs> I think this season was like quite like rebelling, you yeah. know, to the yeah. rules and everything. Like we thought our season was bad, but I've heard this season is just, they got to the end and they were just like, I don't care. Wow. So I don't know how that's going to go what? because if you annoy the producers then that's yeah, well, not a good thing. It's a risk you take, right, as well. So yeah. what kind of rebellious stuff did you guys do on your season to break the rules, would you say? Yeah, so <laughs> our, there was specific people in ours right from the get-go that literally just kept doing that. Like, not they would break curfew, but they would sneak out. Mm. So yeah, okay. you try and not get caught. And you do have someone that's on your level of the building that's like the supervisor. Um, and they sit near the... they. They have a room down the end, which was on mine and Leighton's side, so we couldn't really, like, rebel too much. <laughs> but on the other side, they were sneaking out all the time. And yeah. then it got to the point that that person was then told that they had to sit at the lift. So, like, till midnight, this person was, like, on the chair sitting at the lift to make sure no one could get in and out. Yeah, wow. Yeah. It is such a weird concept to me. It's, like, real high school vibes. Yeah. like, trying to sneak out of home. Like, yes. But Seriously. I also feel like I kind of get it because, obviously, that resulted in the cheating scandal all happening off camera yes. and as a viewer yeah. you're like well I wish they filmed this or I wish this was kind of like worked out better so we yeah. could understand it so it well, makes that's sense. what they told us they were they had to sit us down and be like guys all you're doing is you're making the viewers not understand what's happening mm. and yeah. why and we don't have the footage and then it's a he say she say and they're watching a show they're not watching it like you know or reading a book like they're watching yeah. a show and they need the pieces so you need to stop going out but then people just kept going out <laughs> you know it was only towards the end that um Leighton and I we broke curfew and wants to go to a movie because he was taking me on a date <laughs> that's cute that was cute that's but, but we didn't excuse. get in too much trouble because we weren't you're you not know, ruining the storyline you're just literally stepping out to watch something. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to get into this year's season and I guess talk about the start of the experiment the matchmaking process with the first week we've seen some great matches I feel Tim and Sarah on paper, obviously they both speak Spanish. They both have a connection to like a small town in Colombia. So it's very believable that Mm. the experts or the producers would match them together. Then you have Lucinda and Tim. He hates the quiet, hates people that meditate, paired with someone that's super spiritual. From your experience, do you think that the matches are actually made in the hopes of finding love or there are some that kind of intend to butt heads? I feel like when I was watching it, I was thinking, why are you putting like the same person with the same person? Because I get common interests, but when you put the actual same like personality and whole complete makeup of someone with a mirror version of them, exhibit A, me and Leighton, you are, they're going to clash. They just do. You can't date yourself. Yeah. I tried to date yourself. I did it with Leighton. It's really difficult. Yeah. So when you put like the two alphas together and they're both so controlling and this and that like that's to me that's not really going to work that's just going to be fireworks when you put like timothy and lucinda you've gone too far 
mm. you know, one way to the other. Yeah. You need to find like that kind of balance. I think that's definitely for drama surely yeah that's not gonna work yeah and then you've got um like sarah and tim they're not like too too com- like the same they've just got similar pieces so maybe they could have a better chance yeah. but i think you can see if it looks like a spitting image of someone mm. that's to clash well you see the experts do it and i think they did it with you and Leighton too where it's like well they have real potential to be our power couple and then but that you know that <laughs> they or the producers or whoever are doing these matches and like sure we're going to sell it based on like so compatible and love but also hopefully this gets really explosive and like causes mm. some fights yeah yeah i think so i think like that you got to have that tiny bit of difference you got to be the same mm. have the same interests, be a little different and then sure there's like compromising you learn each other and you grow right. but if you are just literally dating yourself that's it's just impossible to do and then if you were so far from one end to the other, so different where it's, yeah. oh, I can't stand someone that meditates and she's sitting there with incense and yeah. <laughs> meditating yeah. and like, come on, you know? Do you think your checklist of what you wanted in a partner did eventuate with Leighton and it kind of matched what you had asked for? Yeah, my checklist was like 10 out of 10 boxes for yep. the type of person I wanted and all of that. Like as it went on more, I would say that we were both quite stubborn and I didn't put stubborn on my checklist right and I didn't put like controlling or anything like that like I knew that I had controlling tendencies like and I know that Leighton definitely does Mm. um but when I tried to say that in one of our commitment ceremonies I remember Alessandra saying but Mel didn't you say that you wanted to you know you're so busy all day controlling everything with business that you want to come home and then just let go of the ropes and let someone else do all the control and I was like yeah but not control me i mean like (laughs) control my dinner or something you know and like cooked for me every night which was beautiful but still like i didn't want to get home and then you know someone be set in their way me be set in our way and no one budge and like that wasn't on my list i guess tracking back to before the weddings before we met leighton i wanted to touch on the hens party briefly as well because we saw that play out this week i think it's where Obviously, you girls get to kind of know each other for the first time, see who you like, maybe dislike. Um, <laughs> I always remember your hands party because I remember that conversation you had with Melissa and yeah. I just thought it was the funniest bit of television where you're just like, Iconic. okay, and she's just going off on a tangent. Did you see anything in this hands party that aired this week that you were kind of like, oh, I can see maybe some drama or fireworks exploding later on i don't think all the girls are going to get along this season Mm -hmm. i didn't get that vibe at all i got that they're quite different and quite headstrong and opinionated so i don't think like they're gonna sit there quiet i don't even think the quiet ones are gonna be quiet Yeah, yeah absolutely i actually think it's to the point that again they're so different yeah that it's gonna cause some you know feathers will be ruffled that's what i think yeah how long were you filming the hens night for it was a long time and I got there last, second last. So I think the girls had already been there for hours and hours. I'm going to say maybe 10 hours, but it was probably wow. more. It's all, always a long time. That's, so I, will, I don't know how you keep in kind of like social mode or whatever. I think I would just get so alcohol. tired. I'll get so yeah. sad. Oh yeah. Weather how much do they let yeah. you drink actually? Well, look, it's, you're meant to have like roughly two glasses, but they really just cut you off when you start not being able to do a voxy which is your chat to camera yeah um so if you didn't want to chat to camera like you would just drink or act drunk (laughs) and then if you couldn't spring like string your sentences together or that they'd go thanks so much really and then you know it's not going to be used or and then you know it's not going to be okay because they can't use it so at the final dinner party with like the honesty um box like the black box and everything that dragged on so much because i don't think there was like much coming out of it and everyone was really like it was almost like a tea party at that time. All mm. the big strong characters had gone and, you know, everyone was kind of getting along. So it went so long. And I remember them taking away the alcohol. There being no food, no alcohol on the table. <laughs> we were getting so tired that we were like all sleepy. So they, everyone was like into their microphones, alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. Really? And then they finally brought out like one more round hours later and everyone just like went for gold. And then by the end of it, we were all so drunk, but... It wasn't just one person, it was all of us. So they couldn't have no footage or no chat to cameras. So I think that night was just really (laughs) not 
not good. <laughs> you can't tell at all, though. So they did a great job editing. Yeah, they're good at what they do. <laughs> <laughs> if we get into the wedding now, on your wedding day, how early do you start getting ready? What does that timeline look like? For the men, I think they get ready earlier because they're at the venue hours before. Um, I know Leighton was up at 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. packing his bags and doing everything because he lived in Sydney. I was up at 6 a.m. And then I think I was in hair and makeup by 6.30. And I got to the event. I was meant to get to the it was a boat, but I didn't know where I was going. Mm. I think I was meant to get there at 10, but I started later because, you know, girls getting ready. It all went pear shaped. And then I think I got there at like 11. It was like raining. And I don't think we actually did the aisle until maybe 3 p.m. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. And apparently Leighton had been standing there for 45 minutes before I got there oh on at the altar. <laughs> but I had to do so many takes and like with the raining and things like do you remember the clip of like my yes. eye? Where <laughs> well, you're walking back and forth and onto like, the boat. Iconic. And they got it. Um, yeah. And then, so by the time, like, and then my hair was all flat again. So the hairdresser had to curl it all. Yeah. Wow. And then, yeah. So she was really like upset because she had to like curl it like three times. And by the time I got up there, I think we were so behind that they, they literally just took me into this like vacant area and went, okay, just walk around there. But I didn't know it was my wedding. Like, so when I came around, I'm waiting for this moment of, you know how you see the head turn and you yeah. want to see what they look like and if they like you. I walked out and I was like, oh, shit, everyone's here. By the time I looked up, two men were standing, staring at me, the celebrant <laughs> and Leighton. I didn't know. I didn't course, know who was, yeah. who was who. So I just missed my moment. I was really upset about that secretly. And then um, by the time I walked down, I got there and then I said hi and Leighton was so nervous and they didn't show any of this but he was like like i couldn't wow <laughs> so when you see me going that wasn't at him that was like he he didn't take a breath oh yeah. my gosh and he was like and my hair was blowing and i just was like had he introduced himself as, as your groom at that point or were you still like is this a weird celebrant that's just <laughs> yeah. like talking a lot no he had introduced himself by then <laughs> yeah um and then i couldn't get his name because i'd never heard of leighton before yeah Wow, no Leighton Hewitt fan. <laughs> never. I was like, I, I couldn't remember the name because I just yeah. never heard of it. And then I had to go do it again and again. Okay, yeah. Then the ring doesn't fit and you do it again and again. And Oh my goodness. Wow. And then you start filming at three o'clock. What yeah. time, how late does the night end up going? Into the early a.m. Okay. Yeah. It's a huge day. And it's then a huge same day. Same rules with alcohol, I'm guessing. Yeah. So I would say our wedding was 14 hours. Wow. wow. So by then, and they're putting together this 20 minute clip. Yeah. And then all the viewers are going, well, you said what you said. And it's like, okay. Yeah. When you take certain reactions or certain quotes from that. Yeah. If I followed hours. them around with the camera for an entire day, I could make them a villain too. Oh, absolutely. All they've got to be like is, oh, yuck to something they ate. And I'll just put their back of their head grab the oh yuck and put it them looking at a girl like, yeah yeah do you totally. know that'd be a fun experiment for maps villains to then yeah. villainize the mm. viewers yeah. told them. <laughs> i would watch that follow you around yeah. for a day uh, a edit great. your highlights on your instagram yeah yes. <laughs> a um, great concept for a reality yeah. show yeah. no everyone's really wasted at the wedding wow okay like you're really drunk and all your friends and family are even drunker <laughs> okay i've never seen my brother so drunk <laughs> I mean, I feel like that kind of comes into the best man speech that showed at Tim and Sarah's wedding. Oh so obviously that was a lot. We've got a clip to show you, but basically it's been called the worst best man speech of all time. And I'd love to hear what you thought when you're watching it. Experiment 865. I mean, Sarah. Tim is a wonderful human being. He radiates charisma like the sun. And Sarah, you can find solace in the fact, rancid or not, Tim will still eat you. That's like not okay. Did you think that that was the result of a bad edit or was it purely just a bad speech? That's not a bad edit. That's a bad speech. I'm shocked that that's even on there. Isn't this like Mm. a 7 p.m. viewing? True. Yeah, yeah you know? true. But what I was most shocked about was that, and and what could have been a bad edit is maybe Tim did try and stop him and they didn't show it. Yeah. Mm. But for me, I I was kind of like, why is why is he not stopping this? Why is he letting this happen to her? 
So I always go for the guy, you know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then I'm like, is this friend, did he find him like on the street before walk, like, got walking to the wedding or is this your yeah, mate? Like, Cause it is doesn't this a proper up. best friend of yours? Because if it is, is yeah. that what you're like mm. when the cameras aren't rolling too? Is this the kind of humor that you relate to? That was going through my head when I was watching it. Like, yeah. absolutely. Like I know myself and I got so into that when it was happening, like so into her shoes that I was like, waiting for her to just de-mic herself walk out and be like that's disgusting absolutely there's there's no way i would have even let that finish i would have been like yeah yeah, there's no way i spoke to someone that was at the wedding because i kind of wanted to get the vibe on whether it was edited to look as bad like the music obviously does play a big part in it they said that the best man's speech was 10 times worse than what was shown (laughs) Um, there were so many misogynistic, sexist, and dehumanizing comments. And then they also said, this is something that you can touch on, that Sarah's maid of honor read out a speech about her brother who lives overseas. Then there was another bridesmaid who made a beautiful speech. Tim gave a speech. Apparently he was unprepared, did it off the cuff. But how many speeches were at your wedding or are the wedding speeches checked in advance? Because there are lots of speeches made. We only saw one, which was pretty shocking. Yeah. But do the producers know what these people are going to say? Yeah, you know what's interesting? When when they're saying that the speech was so much worse, generally all the bad things that you see in maths that just have you on the edge of your seat being like, is that is that real? Generally, it's so much worse. Like they have to cut it. But I will say wow. a lot of our dinner parties were so much worse. Really? I think some of the villains got off really easily. Wow. For sure. Why do you think um, they don't air that stuff? I think like it can cross the line where people like at this one, I reckon they took it right to the line Mm -hmm. until viewers are going to be like, how did you let that happen? Yeah. Do you know? Um, Yeah. So the speeches, they definitely check them. They send Mm -hmm. them to you and then you, so, so you send your speech and then, and your vows and everything. And then they'll come back and they'll like edit a few things. They'll recommend some edits in some few areas. You'll go back again, back again. Mm-hmm. And that's when you can try and see like, okay, what's my character? Like, you okay, know, yeah. Yeah, um, oh, do they want me to be sweet, feisty, this, but generally when it comes to the vows and the speech, you're putting in a bit of everything yep. and then they choose what obviously gets shown. Mm-hmm. So mine was very heartfelt and it was very very similar to Leighton's. It was almost the same. Yeah. But what they showed of mine was just a part of me going, I, 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 I. Yeah. You know? So, um, and then when it comes to the speeches on the day, my mum did a speech and the whole room was crying. I even heard all the production were crying. But the speech that Leighton did, um, a lot of the crying in the room was to my mum's speech but my mum's speech was never shown oh right wow. yes yeah i think like obviously they pick and choose what speeches to the character because they couldn't show obviously they were showing me more savage and guarded and yeah, yeah. i wasn't the sweet innocent had bad things happen to me kind of role at that stage mm-hmm. yeah so um yeah they they the music for me was like dawn, 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 <laughs> and then the music for like, like was like, ah. <laughs> and then even coming down for like our vows, like the camera for me just was right here, right, watching mm. me be like, and then for Leighton they went all the way back to the beginning of the aisle and went down the aisle and up with like birds chirping in the background, yeah. and that's when I knew, <laughs> don't check your comments. <laughs> I feel like every season there are similar character types. I guess that you can kind of see, okay, they're the Harrison of this season or they're the Olivia, they're the Dom. Do you feel like, have you seen the Melinda of this season yet or any love story that you think was similar to you and Leighton? I'm still waiting to see the, the Mel and Leighton or the Mel. Um, I did ask John, the expert on the red carpet for Logies. Uh, mm. I said, is there a Melinda and Leighton this year? Mm. And he said there was. Interesting. Yeah, so mm. I'm thinking... Are you talking like alphas that can't communicate (laughs) or are you talking like super rocky clash, but like in love or passionate, but like back and forth, back and forth. Like, yeah. Oh, probably segues next into Jack and Tori, because I do want to talk about them. They've been kind Mm. of matched as two alphas, especially Jack describing himself as one numerous times. So we can't forget that he's a leader. <laughs> I think he said about four times yeah. in his episode. Yeah. <laughs> Tori's also described as someone that's probably going to like put him in his place. And I think the experts even said, 
oh, this could be our new power couple. Mm. What were your thoughts seeing that match in? When they were both like, I'm controlling, everything's got its own place and this, that was a couple that I'm referring to saying they're too similar, that's not okay. going to work. Mm-hmm. However, when it gets into it a little, you can see that instantly it's like, Tori came in saying, I'm controlling, I'm headstrong, like I've never compromised. And then by the honeymoon, she's compromising, she's not headstrong, she's not controlling. I'm like, oh, do we have a Bronte Harrison situation here? Because like when Jack walked in, I was like, Harrison. Okay, yeah. Yes, a lot of viewers. Harrison on steroids. Yes, a lot of comments, a lot of viewers are calling him Harrison 2.0 already. I feel like I have a weird theory about Jack and I kind of want to run it past you both. I love it. What is it? (laughs) I feel like when Jack was first announced, based solely on stereotypes, you look at him and you're like, you're the villain, you're the new Harrison, like you care so much about the way you look, you care about the gym. It's easy to stereotype as the villain. Mm. Then watching his intro... He says villainous things like, I'm the alpha, yeah. I like to control. Submissive but, women. Exactly. But I feel like the music wasn't showing villain. Yeah. Like, I feel like it wasn't giving the full villain edit that we know maps and reality TV can give someone. <laughs> so then I kind of thought, why do they not want to make us hate him as much as they could, I guess? And I did some stalking. I did some social media research. Oh, I get it. I looked into <laughs> Leah, which is Tori's bridesmaid, on Instagram. Okay. And Jack currently follows her on Instagram, which to me was kind of a sign that they potentially are still together because you wouldn't follow your match's best friend if you had broken up. And also she didn't like him. Exactly. So obviously things work out between them, which makes me think that these two go the distance in the experiment. And that's why the producers don't want us to hate him from the get go, because we're going to learn to love them or they want us to learn to love them because they're a success story. So that's my theory. That I may is be so wrong, interesting. But I kind of want to get your thoughts as someone that obviously did have a success story in the experiment. What are your thoughts on if the edit can decide whether someone is still together by the end of the experiment? From looking at everything, like, to be honest, we tried to guess the whole time you'll go crazy over it. Like, the, even walking into the commitment ceremony where you sit on that couch says something walking to the dinner party where you sit says something and okay. we were constantly mm. trying to guess it everything has a place and and everything is strategical there i think they edit as they go to a certain extent so when you have like an olivia okay. or an Alyssa that's so lovely so in love everything's perfect and you know, that that is also great for a wow factor to just be so shocked about what yeah, happened. Yeah. Um, to have you, like, form a bond and love someone mm. on the show that you're watching and then be so shocked by them. You you go from that, like, such a high to such a low. So it's such an yeah. emotionally manipulative, you know, feeling. So if you're talking about, like, the music's not there yet for him, it's too obvious. Like, don't forget, you've got a sex expert on there as well. And he, if he's all about sex in the beginning and being dominating Christian Grey, he even referenced himself to like all of this. If everyone was to just come on and hate that, well, now you're slut shaming, you know, yeah, now true. you're doing that. Now you've got a sex expert on there that's saying like whatever your flavor and you're just coming at this person. Yeah. So I guess you can't just go at someone because of the way that, you know, they like to do their sex. Yeah, totally. But it's obviously how they start to go about it and whether yeah. the girl is on board. So I think we'll see that a little later on. Maybe she's on board. I think that's a great segue into the next clip. It's Tori and Jack on their honeymoon talking about their sexual connection. I'm a bit of a control freak. Okay. Jack was confident he could take charge in the relationship. I definitely reckon I'll sort her out and we'll have a good time. And Tori's attraction to Jack proved too strong to resist. The hair, body, glistening in the sun. Move it. There's definitely like a sexual energy there. But unbeknownst to Tori, Jack's sexual feelings for her weren't exactly reciprocated. We're not sexually connected at all. What are your thoughts on their connection so far? I, when I look at that, I wonder if, because Tori's always been that dominant, controlling person wearing the pants, Mm -hmm. has she actually ever then had a Jack? And now that she's up against one, is that why she's instantly just gone submissive? Because usually, like, I'm quite a strong female when I come into relationships. Like, if I have a guy that doesn't match my, you know, alpha or energy, I typically 
I, I typically am yeah that stronger person it really changes you and then if i have a stronger guy where i submit like it's not in in the way that they're talking but it it really you can the guy can change you yeah so if she really likes him which it looks like i think instantly she's just gone oh i just need to do what i need to do for him to like me because Mm. i'm used to guys liking me yeah and then but i'm sorry well number one i don't see what she sees (laughs) with that glistening and all that i'm just like put your shirt on it was a vibe um, tuning for me too i was like stop it it's a no like the Tarzan vibes and that for me i'm like oh no can we take you to the the barber um <laughs> <laughs> um and but then sitting there on the edge when she's like yeah do this do that i'm like okay is she trying to show the control but it's not really there right she no, likes him i think you can really tell she likes him and i'm wondering if forced. that's the energy he's also picking up on because he does like submissive women (laughs) and she's like probably not challenging him heaps and I just like as a side note I hate when men are like I need a woman to challenge me it's like go challenge yourself (laughs) go go read a self-help book like you can do it um but maybe he is picking up on that kind of like she's nearly turned a bit more anxious in her energy to get him to like her back yeah it's a bit and that's putting him on. off yeah mm. it's a bit almost like oh i know guys like a, a, a strong woman i'm gonna like be strong with it and it's a bit to me like forced because she likes him but i'm sorry when they're kissing in the water and stuff well he i'm sorry but you led her on you made her think yeah. you yeah. were into her why did the kiss go for so long why were your hands going everywhere like yes. you're so into it why do that to someone? It's like a control thing. Yeah. So she's, of course, going to sit there. Like, now she looks, you know, naive to the fact of, oh, I'm, he likes me and mm. where we both like each other. Now she, she's been made to look a bit silly, but he led her on. A hundred percent. And is that like ego stroking for him? hundred percent. Or does he actually like her? Well, they're still together. Stay tuned. Also, I kind of just hope they would be over by hometown visits where she opens his drawer and sees all the stacked tuna. I would be like, what is going on? Oh my gosh. Like, and, and to the side drawer, it's going to be like whips and chains and <laughs> yeah. true. you know, just yeah. a Tarzan vine. Like when it gets to, to the sex week. Yeah. That's going to, that's going to be, that'll be really interesting. He'll be in his element. Also, I'm getting off track here, but when Alessandra was like to him, what flavor are you? And he's like, chocolate. I was like, that's a pretty boring answer. <laughs> yeah, I know. But when he said put it in the microwave and melt it down, I was like, that is serial killer vibe, yes. man. What you could do to this girl? Yes. Their honeymoon is in Vanuatu. They're having the best time in the water. Then you've got some other couples that are in like regional Australia. There's a full <laughs> difference between these honeymoons. How do they decide who goes overseas, who stays in Australia? So it's really weird, right? So they start the weddings quite early. So when you do your hens and you do your barks, some of the girls were like off in the next few days to get married. And, mm-hmm. and like I had two weeks to wait. Wow. So what happens? Because you know how you see us all kind of do married at the same time, do the honeymoon at the same time, yeah. the dinner party at the same time. Yeah. That's not all correct because like, for instance, Jesse and Claire were first. And then what happens is if you're first, they actually have to separate you for a few days before while everyone else catches up. So that uh, no more happens and oh, they yeah. don't get it on camera. Yeah, so they have to separate you and then bring you back together to go into the dinner party. So Leighton had COVID at ours and ours was really pushed out. So we got like Hawkesbury. We are seeing this season already a bit of the breaking of the fourth wall happening. Mm. Producers kind of playing a bit more of a sneakier role. Kind of leads us into our next clip, which is Collins. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to hear your thoughts because yeah. they showed Collins being asked questions and then answering the questions, which I feel like is something we don't really get to see, but I'll play you the next clip and you can share what your thoughts are. It's uh, all about how you're feeling. Yeah. Like open up and let us in. Mm. First night with your wife. Are you gonna share the bed? Look, we all get caught up in the moment. Human beings. I just got married. What a day. What a day. He's definitely in his head a lot. He's pausing to think, how do I say this? So when she watches it, she's not upset. When the viewers yeah. watch it, like mm. he, for the first two weeks, you're in the the mindset of a camera in Australia. Mm-hmm. After those first two weeks, you don't give a anymore. You're like, I don't care what you think. I don't care what he sees. 
I'm having my yeah. my voice in it now. Um, I think he will get better at that, hopefully. Yeah. But the what a day, what a day. It's definitely he's. That's what he says when he obviously doesn't want to say anything. Yeah. yeah, interesting. I feel like they've done that a few times this season where they've shown the questions being asked or more of the producers. And in this yeah. instance, I was kind of thinking maybe by showing the question they're being asked followed by their answer, it kind of eliminates the excuse of blaming it on the edit. Like the people, the participants can't come out and be like, they made me say that or yes. I didn't mean it like that. If they're showing it in full, the question and answer, maybe that's their mm-hmm. tactic to eliminate that. I've noticed it more this season. Um, I was just chat- chatting about this the other day with Tani, actually. We were like brainstorming that and we were like, it's so interesting. Like you can hear the petition participants saying like show we weren't allowed to say show we were we always had to say experiment and if we said yeah, show they would make right. us say it again saying experiment wow, right okay. um and then in in these clips like you see like even natalie falling over with her ankle and that you see all the production mm-hmm. and then when they're about to to go to their honeymoon you see her say they're saying do you want to do a vox which the audience don't know but it's a chat to camera yeah. Yeah. and then she's gone oh no I just can I wait I don't want to look like I've been crying so she's still in the mindset of I'm doing a show people are I don't want to look crying it means I don't want to be real Mm. um and it's not I don't want to look like I'm crying because he's going to see me it was I don't want to look like I'm crying in that chat to camera to Australia do you know so but they show the producer coming in and they show them asking for that Mm. to say hey it's not us guys it's them like they're the ones that actually are like it's real it's not scripted yeah. It's not fake. Yeah. We're here just doing us and they're here doing them and we're not asking them to do it. They're yeah. doing it. Like on that point, there was a discussion at Ben and Ellie's wedding where Ellie's cousin was grilling him about whether he's on the show for fame or whether he's actually there for the love. And I feel like with with the producers making more of a point that it's a show, it kind of excuses the yes. fact that they're on it for fame. Like, do you think it's possible to go on maps with the desire to get famous and to find love i think everyone goes on with a bit of everything yeah um and i heard john the expert saying the other day in one of his interviews that he believes everyone does come on for both Mm -hmm. and it's just the scale of how much someone wants one or the other so um otherwise why are you on a Mm. tv show do you know what i mean um, but yeah, so I feel like when it comes to someone like Ben, I, I'd say fame. Okay. Yeah. Say Over love? Of, yes. Really? Okay. 100%. I don't, I don't buy the whole narrative of like, I've been traveling for 18 years and now I've decided it's time to settle down. Some insiders have told me. Ooh, oh my God. <laughs> this is the guy with all the inside too. That Ben was almost the bachelor this season that aired this year Interesting. um apparently he didn't make it all the way into the casting process but there was a moment where he was going to be bachelor they chose mm. another ben yeah true actually yeah. they chose another ben. kind of two bands <laughs> which kind of shows though that i mean he was willing to go on one show he's willing to go on another yeah they both love shows so that does say something it's not like he's been trying to go on survivor and all of that but it is interesting that he's got a reality TV past, I guess. Yeah. Well, a lot of people from our season had reality past. Like, it was Leighton's fourth TV show. Mm, true. true. Most yeah. people had applied for other shows. Um, and even Harrison sat on the commitment ceremony, which I don't know if it was showed or not, but he was, you know, going to be Bachelor. He reckons he was going to be on Bachelorette <laughs> or Bachelor, but he was too muscly. <laughs> That's what he said. Oh, um, yeah, poor guy. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if that showed or not, but I feel like that... That is the thing. So we thought we'd play a game to wrap things up. Yeah. Uh, In the spirit of the show and who we've seen so far, we want to know who you'll kiss, who you would marry, and who you would instantly leave straight away. Let's do it. So, kiss. I would kiss Collins because I just, he just needs a hug. He just, he's just a teddy bear. (laughs) Who would you marry? I would marry Timothy. Really? Everyone gets so shocked there. Lucinda's Timothy. Yeah. Like Tin Man tattoo Timothy. Yeah. Yeah. Love a Tin Man. (laughs) Who would you leave? Can I have like a triple marriage leave? Yeah, absolutely. And it's Jack, Ben, and Tim. We couldn't let you leave without letting you take part in an honesty box. We've got one question here. We'll pass it to you if you could just read it out, answer it to the best of your ability. Yeah. You thought the honesty box was over for you, but... Instant PTSD. Like I just got sweaty. I don't know why. It's like actual <laughs> PTSD. Um, okay. Oh, I knew I was going to see the L word in here. 
and not the L word of love. <laughs> Are you still in contact with Leighton? And would you ever consider getting back together with him? I'm not still in contact with Leighton. And at this stage, I don't see myself getting back together. With Did, him. Watching the show now, obviously it brings up a lot of like nostalgic feelings yes. and thinking of your own journey. Does it ever make you want to reach out to him considering you're not in contact or are you just like, absolutely not? I have days where I will miss Leighton and miss certain things. And then I have days where I'm so angry and I get Mm. so like, I can't go back there. I'm much happier now. Are you dating or would you go on dating apps now? I'm not dating. And for a long time, I felt like guilty if I even thought about dating. Like I still feel very connected to Leighton. Yeah. But I think like I'm finally getting at that stage where I'm like, okay, I'm 34, like come on Mel, get back out there. But then how? You're going to go on Hinge or Bumble, end up in the Daily Mail. Do you know how, how do you Yeah, even, now that your life you is date? public, like how do you find yeah. that person? It's already hard enough yeah. just as a normal person that yeah. hasn't been on reality TV or doesn't have a profile. Yeah, and then you also think like you don't want something to be shot and then like latency. Like I still care about yeah. that. Yeah, so. Okay. You know, and, and I don't know what he's doing. Guys usually move on pretty fast um, and date and all of that. But I think he's pretty respectful. So he's whatever's happening, it's all kept out the limelight. Well, if Tim- things don't work out with Timothy and Lucinda, he knows who to call. Oh, my gosh. Lucinda and Timothy had my producer from last year because Lucinda reached out to me. You've already oh, got so much no. in common. This is still your man. <laughs> well, I'm excited to hear what you think about the rest of the season, how things unfold. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks Mel. so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming in. <laughs> okay, so just before we wrap up today's episode, I want to tell you all about my interview with a maths celebrant. I know, you've been keeping me waiting here. <laughs> Honestly, I love her. Her name is Beverly. Eagle-eyed fans might remember her as a celebrant for both Olivia and Jackson's wedding in season nine. Okay. And the celebrant for Melissa and Josh last year. Two very different weddings. Two very different (laughs) results. So when I spoke to her, she said that she had been approached to be a celebrant on season eight. That didn't work out. So then she came back for season nine and then they Mm -hmm. asked her again for season 10. I wanted to know how real the maths weddings are because obviously... (laughs) We know it's not legally binding, but is the the first reaction genuine? Is what we see on TV real? Here's what she had to say about whether maths weddings are fake. I can genuinely say that it isn't fake. Normally the two couples that I've actually had the opportunity to be part of in maths, the groom physically would face me on the day um, and the bride will walk down the aisle and that is the real first time that they would have met. The issue is, and not issue, the nervous reaction that the groom does is because he's been waiting there for a very long time for the bride to arrive, meaning that he could hear her family speak or her friends speak um, and he's obviously family and friends actually gearing him up and making him extra nervous. The other issue for me is a little bit hard is because I do love a chat and I can't really speak to the groom and most of the times they ask me questions and all I really need to do is nod and smile, which is obviously a lot nerve-wracking when someone's standing there without any reaction from the person that's literally the only person that's actually looking at them at that direction. But generally, I would say, guys, it is not fake. Well, there we have it. That's interesting. And it also adds a lot of context to the fact that Melinda was saying that Leighton had been waiting for her for, what, 45 minutes yeah. or more. Really nervous by the time she approached. And the fact that they're probably just standing there just wanting to have a conversation with someone and getting the silent treatment from and the, the celebrant. And the celebrants literally cannot say a word to them, which I think hard. is fascinating. That would be really hard. Well, that's a wrap on week one of Maths. How are you feeling about the rest of the season? I am excited to see where things go from here. I'm also very excited for the first dinner party. I feel like after a week of weddings, and I know there's a few more to go, but I'm always counting down for that first dinner party where everyone yeah. meets everyone and to see who's going to clash. I'm here for the drama. Yeah, that's where the drama will really begin. But thank you so much for tuning into the very first episode of Yahoo Australia's Behind the Edit. We've been reaching out to a lot of people behind the scenes, so make sure to go to Yahoo Lifestyle to get more spicy maths goss. 
If you like this episode, we would love it if you could give us a five-star review. Make sure you're following us on all our socials and you can join our exclusive Facebook page. All the links will be in the show notes and we will see you next week. Behind the Edit is brought to you by Yahoo Australia, hosted by Lachlan Gurdon and Talia Pritchard. Produced by Katie Brown. Social production by Alexa Tubatini. Yahoo Australia would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast was recorded, and pay our respects to elders past and present.